This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aperoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aperoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today's show at the LA Auto Show in the USA, where Hyundai has just unveiled its latest electric vehicle, the all-new Ioniq 9 three-row SUV, which will go on sale around the world next year. Built on the same eGMP platform that the Kia EV9 is built on, it's similar in size but somehow manages to look like the offspring of an SUV combined with the Volvo station wagon of days gone by. It features a 110 kilowatt hour battery pack for acclaimed 620 kilometers, 385 miles of WLTP test cycle range in its most efficient guise. Single motor and all wheel drive long range variants and all wheel drive performance models will be offered. All with blisteringly quick 350 kilowatt DC fast charging. Pricing has yet to be released, but with a bunch of onboard smarts, a UV sanitizer and second row swivel seats, it will likely be quite expensive. Sticking with the LA Auto Show, the Hyundai Ioniq 9's cousin, the EV9, was given its official 2026 revision reveal at the event. And there are some important tweaks like the just-revealed Ionic 9, North American EV9s will now come with NAX as standard, and the new model year welcomes the long-promised EV9 GT variant to the family for many markets around the world. This is complete with a 4.3-second sprint time and 374 kilowatts at the wheels. The EV9 GT comes with a virtual gear shifter system as found on other eGMP performance models, an electronic limited slip differential, and for the first time, a electronically controlled suspension. We were impressed with the EV9 GT line when we drove it earlier this year and thought it had plenty of power. But if you want more and still want to tow, well, the EV9 GT is now officially on its way to market. Finishing our eGMP-based trio of news, the EV6 also got its official model year refresh at the LA Auto Show with some subtle redesigns, a new battery pack and other tweaks. First, for North American markets, the EV6 will also come with NAX as standard, with Kia moving the NAX charging inlet to the other side of the vehicle to avoid upsetting Tesla owners at superchargers. Globally, there's a new 63-kilowatt-hour standard range battery and an 84 kilowatt Kilowatt hour battery pack for longer range with up to 319 miles, 513 kilometers of EPA range in their most efficient guise. Built in the US for the North American market, this model year EV6 will be eligible for tax credits as long as they last, and globally, the EV6 GT gets some tweaks to its lineup, adding the fake engine noise and gear shifters found in the Hyundai Ionic 5N. After warning that it might delay the launch of its first electric pickup in the form of the Ram 1500 REV, Stellantis has done just that, pushing back the truck's debut until sometime next year. First unveiled in concept form at CES nearly two years ago, Stellantis has been promising the Ram 1500 REV would dominate the market and has since unveiled a range-extended variant of the pickup truck called the Ram 1500 Ram Charger. While Stellantis has been making making noises almost all year about how these will be pushed back if things aren't quite right. Analysts in the industry are suggesting the final decision to delay was prompted by the results of the US federal election and likely cancelling of all US tax incentives for EVs. Stellantis says we should now expect the official launch sometime next year. Sticking with bad news for the EV industry, we're off to Europe now, where Ford's European EV production woes have deteriorated further. Last week, I told you that Ford had decided to switch production at its Cologne facility to one week on, one week off, as a result of slowing interest in its just-launched Ford Capri and Ford Explorer EVs. This week, it announced it intends to cut its workforce in Europe by 4,000 employees, with 2,900 of those being based at the 
the aforementioned production facility. In addition to the layoffs, Ford says it will be executing a short-time working day schedule at the production facility for the first quarter of next year and hopes that it can remove the limitation early next year in order to meet what it predicts will be increased EV demand out of planned EU emissions regulations. Tesla fans often tell us very angrily in the comments that Tesla is the safest car anyone can buy. And based on crash test data alone, that's certainly true in much of the world. But a new study from NHTSA shows Tesla's accident rates, specifically its fatal accident rates, are higher than for any other automaker out there. Not because the vehicles aren't keeping people safe in the event of accidents, but because Tesla drivers are getting into more fatal accidents than average. The reason, according to the report, is distracted driving that seems to play a massive part. What with the massive touchscreen and advertising that refers to features like autopilot full self-driving, ultimately giving customers a false sense of security in their vehicle's capabilities, which in turn leads to poor driver choices and low driver attention. As I have said many times before, full self-driving isn't self-driving. Like all other systems, you need to be ready to take over. Mitsubishi Corporation, which is a separate entity from the car maker Mitsubishi, has announced a 25 million US dollar investment in battery swap company Ample. Historically, battery swapping hasn't been taken that seriously by the auto industry, with Better Place, one of the pioneers of battery swapping, declaring bankruptcy 11 years ago. Even Tesla's planned battery swap program was scuppered after just a few months. But with battery swapping gaining massive traction in China and technology now far more capable than it once was, Ample's battery swap tech, which can be deployed anywhere, is far more appealing to investors than the bulky and expensive swap stations of days gone by. In the case of Ample, it's already being used with rideshare fleets in several cities around the world. Daimler Truck has unveiled a new all-electric version of its popular Inturo motor coach, a near-production-ready prototype called the e-Inturo. Designed primarily for inter-urban routes and tour bus duties, the e-Inturo is due to eventually enter into production with a choice of between 50 to 63 seats, depending on the option boxes ticked. When it debuts next year as a production vehicle, it will also be available with a choice of one or two 800 volt LFP battery packs, each offering 207 kilowatt hours of capacity. In its longest legged variant, this will translate for up to 500 kilometers, 310 miles of range per charge. Why offer two battery packs? Well, that's partly due to configurability, but it also allows for twin CCS charging, giving each battery pack its own dedicated 300 kilowatt CCS charging station where possible. BYD has just celebrated achieving a world first at celebrating the 10 millionth new energy vehicle to roll off its production line. While it's fair to note that some of these vehicles are plug-in hybrids rather than battery electric ones, with the majority of its first few million NEVs being plug-in hybrids rather than battery electric, that balance has shifted in favour of EVs. What's also pretty incredible to note here is the rapid growth for production. It made its one millionth new energy vehicle just three years ago. That fact suggests that regardless of what other countries may have in mind regarding Chinese-made EV tariffs, BYD now has the capacity, and importantly the capital, to fund massive overseas production facilities, enabling it to continue its meteoric rise in the auto industry. And finally for the segment, we're off to Sweden, where electric hydrofoil boat specialist Candela was celebrating the latest successful round of funding this week. It's closed its Series C funding round this week, and it now has more than $40 million in funding raised this year. And it's on track to expand its production as it aims to decarbonise ferry transit with its hydrofoiling P12. In addition to recently celebrating the start of operations in Stockholm, Sweden, where its ferries have slashed travel times without harming the local marine life, Candela confirmed this week it's completed its first North American sale, where a new service on Lake Tahoe will help transport visitors to the region between the north and south points of the lake, speeding up winter access to local ski resorts. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? 
Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EVI, how to file and pay your RUCs and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. Not so long ago, the concept of electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft was honestly something of a pipe dream, something you really only saw in sci-fi. In the last few years, though, fiction has become reality thanks to increasingly efficient batteries and motors, and we've already seen plenty of eVTOL companies execute demonstration flights at various locations around the world. This week, Chinese firm eHang carried out some test flights with a difference, taking off and landing with passengers on board for the very first time. Its tiny eHang 216 is big enough for two people to sit side by side, um, helicopter style, but what's important to note here is that the flight took place without any pilots on board. Everything was carried out with remote supervision. It's another milestone along the way to commercial electric vertical takeoff and landing operation, but we are still a very long way from truly affordable EV toll flights. And finally, we have seen a massive increase in anti-EV sentiment of late, fueled in part by political change, but also because of truly sensationalist reporting in the media. And one thing we hear time and time and time again is that EVs are no good in cold weather, will run their batteries out and leave you stranded. But that's something I'm sure the city of Hammerfest in Norway would be super keen to prove incorrect, as its fleet of electric buses head to their second Arctic winter of service. Built by Volvo, the all-electric buses have had to handle snow, rain, wind and ice well north of the Arctic Circle, and yet so far the buses have proven incredibly reliable. Admittedly, the town says there was one instance of the bus running flat, but just like the diesel buses they replace, that appears to have been down to driver error rather than bus error. Here's hoping that they can successfully complete many, many more winters of operation with nary a problem. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, do make sure that you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from the channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it's high time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It's super easy to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'm not going to be here next week as I'm based in the US and it's US Thanksgiving, but I will be back the week after. And in the meantime, do check out other videos on this channel, including from the lovely Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge. The stuff he's been up to of late, I'm very jealous. His videos absolutely rock. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of your day. Kakite! See you next time.